online members and viewers, you are welcome as well to this glorious service. This is our Sunday service, and this is the second service. The first service was a blessing. This one will also bless you. It's also our communion service Sunday. So online members and viewers in all nations, in all cities, in all places, if you can, get your communion element ready. There will be a proclamation over it from here. You will take, and the power of God will get into operation. I hope you are here with your notebook and your writing materials. We do that intentionally. In this house, the House of Living Spring Chapel International, the house of TPGF, we don't just listen to messages, we do jottings, we take notes. In case you are just joining us, please imbibe that culture as well. There is a mystery behind writing things down. When you write things down, it sticks. When you write things down, you have a way of remembering. Beyond that, we are supposed to get back at our own time and review and go through all the notes, the Bible references, the topic, the outlines, the illustrations, the examples, and also begin to write what you decide to do about the ministrations. Any ministration you receive, any message, any teaching, without action, after listening, is a waste. Because every sermon, every preaching, and here we don't preach sermon, we bring messages. We wait on God to give us a word for his people. And every word sent by God is supposed to change your world. Every message sent by God is supposed to clear up your mess. It's supposed to make you better. That was why when we were closing the first service, I quoted 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. It's one of the scriptures I love quoting. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. If these things be in you and they abound, they will make you that you are neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the word of God. Another scriptures I always quote in this respect is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Hebrews 4, 2. He says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. As soon as they had it, they forgot it. Did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. So it's not just one hearing. Hearing and hearing. Somebody say hearing and hearing. Yeah. Say hearing and hearing again. Yeah. Aha. So when you do your jottings, at your time, you go over it again. You meditate again. The place of meditation is the place of revelation. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law must not depart from your mouth, but you, shall, you will meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to what is written there. In doing so, you make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. I say to somebody's life today, you will have good success. But please... Follow these instructions. Intentionally have notebooks and biros. Don't bring a biro that the ink is dry. Then you are beginning to say, can you get me one biro there? Like somebody I know used to do. Don't do that. Make sure you are prepared and you do your jottings and you go over them and you apply these things to your life. The word of God does not work until you apply it to your life or you apply yourself to it. The word of God is not magic. It don't just work. It's a book of insight. It's a book of revelations for you to apply it to your life. That's the first sermon this morning. Our October focus is ruling and reigning. This is our month of ruling and reigning emphasis. Each month has an emphasis, a focus, a core message, and as revelations, expositions, teachings, impartations, prayers begin to come 
along that focus, those who connect to it begin to see the manifestation of God in that area. Those who connect to it. Luke 16 verse 16, it says right from the time of John the Baptist, when the kingdom of God is preached, everyone pressed into it. Everyone presses into it. Right from the time of John the Baptist, when the word of God is brought, you got to press into it. Come on, say, I will press into it. Please, don't just be the hearers. Be a doer. That is when you see the power in God's word. Ruling and reigning. Redemption in Christ has lifted us from being sinners to become saints. Redemption in Christ has taken us from sinners to sainthood. It has changed us from slaves to sons. From slavery to sonship. Redemption in Christ has turned us from victims to victors. Jesus did not die in vain. He died to turn us around. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anybody be in Christ, he becomes a new creature, a new species. The old you that was a failure, a victim, a non-entity, a fool, a never-do-well had gone. A new you has emerged. Think that way. He says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Let this be your new mindset. I was talking here yesterday. Until you change somebody's mind, you can't change his life. Let these things be your mindset. Redemption in Christ has turned a non-entity to a celebrity. A slave has become a son. A failure has become a winner. Redemption has brought us rulership and kingship. That is the new you. That's your new version. Your old version is gone. If you give your life to Christ, I was happy this morning. Testifiers, two of my daughters. First of all, I thank God for the salvation of my soul. It's the greatest miracle. I thank God for the transformation that has come over me. October 1 was the first time I came. I had the word. I got born again. And then other blessings begin to come. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and all and his righteousness. All these things shall be added. When you seek him, when your life is transformed, when you get to know him, when you grow in him, all other things that the world, people of the world are running after will become blessings to you. Come on their own. That is how it works. Redemption has brought us to rulership and kingship. I title this message, Five Realms of Dominion. There are different realms of dominion. But let's see what time we do for us to just talk about five realms of dominion before we get into communion and all the other things we have to do in this second service and still close on time. Five realms of dominion. A king reigns. A priest ministers. A king reigns. A priest ministers. And in Christ... The two has been conferred on us. We have been conferred with the two honors of being a king and a priest. Our text is from Revelation 5 verse 10. Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. Can we read it together, every one of us? Let's go. One, two. And has made us... Can we start again? And has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on earth. Look at your neighbor and say hello king. Look at another person and say hello priest. He has made us both kings and priests. Kings to reign and as priests to minister. 
What does it mean to minister? To bring God's dimension, God's message to people around us. That's why we must never close our eyes and close our mouth to people around us. Don't close your eyes to people's sufferings. People are suffering. The devil has brought suffering to the world and we have been sent as priests to bring God's dimension to their lives. He had made us both kings and priests. We are to reign and to minister. Don't forget. Don't forget. He had made us kings and priests. He made us. We didn't make ourselves. He is the one that made us to be kings and priests. All our efforts cannot make us. Our righteousness to him is like a filthy rags. But because of Jesus' intervention, he made us. He said to Peter, follow me and I will make you. Hey, Jesus made people. He makes people. He makes something great out of something condemned. He makes a king out of a slave. He had made us. Follow me and I will make you. There is no one that truly follow God that is not made. Nobody. I said to those who gave their lives to Christ, although the first time as this morning in the first service, I said, if you can join this church, people think when we are asking people to join our church, it's because we are looking for a big crowd. Not necessarily so. Is that we know what is blessing us, we bless them. We know if they join, what has turned us to be happy, fulfilled, godly, able to rule over our flesh, shining in the midst of darkness, we also happen to them. Our own maker, we also make them. That's why we think, join us. Our God will do you good. Join us. The power behind us that has turned a nobody to somebody, a wicked person. Paul the apostle said, I was an injurious person, a murderer. But that encounter on the way to Damascus turned a murderer to a deliverer. So if you join our God, if you know what we know and do what we do, you will become what we are becoming. So I said to them, if you can join this church, not just church as in form of building, if you can listen to the ministration that God is bringing to us, and you receive grace to do them, in six months, look, God does not need eternity to change you. Psalm 126 verse 1. It says, when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, who are like them that dream, it does not take God forever. For 430 years, the children of Israel struggled. They did everything they, they could do. They complained. They cried. Moses even came at a time, was saying to the Egyptians, I will kill you one by one. They did everything. They couldn't set themselves free from slavery. 430 years. What they couldn't do in 430 years, God did in one night. Come and say one night. Today, somebody's destiny will turn around. Today, somebody's perpetual struggle will end. God does not need 10 years. He does not need 5 years. No. When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, Isaac sowed in that land and within one year Isaac the pitied became Isaac the envied. Isaac that wanted to jackpa became Isaac that others were jackpa to come and meet. God turned everything around. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you are, what are passing through but I know that this God the unchanging changer will change your situation. He made us. We didn't make ourselves. He has made us priest and king. That's the first revelation that hit me. He made us. Today you are going to pray, God, make me. God, make me. Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. I will make you preachers to people. 
I will make you helpers of destiny. I will make you a mentor to many. I will make you a, a model for human to follow. I will turn things around. God turns things around for people. He doesn't turn people down. That's the first revelation there. Reigning means kingship. Ruling means kingship. Reigning means authority. Five realms. A believer must rule and reign in life. Five realms. I told them very, very quickly. Number one is the spiritual realm. Every truly born again child of God has the power, God's given power and authority to reign over in the spiritual realm. To take control in the spiritual. And you know the spiritual controls the physical. Everything you see manifesting in the spiritual has a remote control in the spiritual. The heavenly controls the earthly. The supernatural controls the natural. Everything you see happening around, there is a spiritual dimension. Life is not only natural, life is also spiritual. There are things unseen, controlling the things that are seen. It said in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, By faith we know, that the worlds, not one. The worlds were framed together by the word of God. So that the things we are seeing are not made from the things which we see. The unseen controls the seen. The invisible rules over the visible when you are a child of god you have this audacity you have this grace to press spiritual buttons to see natural things turn around for you the first realm of dominion or domination or dominion for a child of god is the spiritual realm redemption has given us spiritual power Redemption has brought us in connection with the power of God. Remember, a human being is essentially a spirit. We are a tripartite being. We are essentially a spirit. We have soul. Both the spirit and the soul dwell in the body, three in one. But the spirit of man is dead, is in coma, until he comes in contact with God, who is spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24. John chapter 4 verse 24. He said, God is a spirit. And whenever you see the word spirit written in capital letter, that speaks about the Holy Spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him. Look at the second spirit, small letter. That is the human spirit. They that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. Our physical and mental body cannot relate with God because God is spirit. What relates with God in us is our spirit. But that spirit is dead until the spirit of God breathes in us. It's like a patient in coma and suddenly jump back to life. And they became conscious. I've had people who came back from coma three, five days after and they're saying, where am I? Where are we? They say hospital, hospital care. What's this on my body? In other words, those five, four or five days, they were totally unaware We are they were. That is how we are, all of us. We are totally unaware who we are until we come back from spiritual coma. Then we become alive to God. And if you build that relationship, John chapter 1 verse 12, as many as received him, he gave them power to become sons and daughters of God. For the spirit of God be as witness with our spirit. That's the manifestation of 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and John chapter 4, verse 24 I have read to us. He gave us power to relate with him. In other words, as a believer, because of redemption, because of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because you have accepted him, you are now able to relate with God 
at the spiritual realm to have control over your physical challenges. So the first area of control every child of God must know is the spiritual control. The spiritual dictate of the physical. Listen, every one of us faces spiritual challenges no matter what you do. Don't say, but I'm a trader. I am not a pastor. What concerns me with that? Ah, even in your trading career, in your market, in your school, in the offices, in your community, even in your family, he says, a man's enemy shall be there of his own household. The people you are buying and selling together, do you know the forces behind them? Do you know the power that backs them up? Do you know who everybody cries to? Do you know what they pour libation on? Do you know where they bow their heads? Do you know who they have sold themselves to? Every one of God, every one, every human being is sold out to something. We are, all of us here, we are God's agents. Psalm 82 verse 6. He says, we are sons of God. Everyone, and I've said, ye are God's. Can you see that? God called us God. <laughs> Ye are God, but it's a God with a small letter G. We are God, and all of us, we are children of the Most High. Where you are, where you sell, where you buy, where you school, where you work, where you study, where you live, among where you operate, you are supposed to be a God there. In your industry, you are supposed to be operating like a god. Because there are some there are other gods. Elijah said to them on Mount Carmel, call on your God, and I will call on my God. There are other gods, but our God is the supreme God. Moses threw his rod in Pharaoh's palace, it became a serpent. I many of you remember that story. And Pharaoh said, you want to threaten me? Is that all you can do? <laughs> me, myself, <laughs> I have magicians. My friend, there are magicians. There are people who have sold themselves out to the devil. We are gods. What does that mean? That we are agent of God. We are God's agent. You are a God's agent. We are light bearers. We bring help. We bring succor. We touch people's lives. We pray for people. We give for people. If you are a true child of God, you are a people person. You are forever thinking, what can I do to help people? What can I do to change situation? What can I do to be a blessing? Is that not how we should think? That's how Christians think. But there are those who wake up every day looking for who to hurt. Who to kill. Who to exploit. All the Yahoo Yahoo boys of this world, all the ritual killers. I told you the, of the the other day of what I watched on the social media. You also saw it. That Kogi boy that said he met a girl and they were chatting. And then he said, "Can you come and see me?" They started chatting, and that one decided to go and see the boyfriend they've been chatting. I think I knew that also. He said, as she agreed to come. I have made up my mind to use her. How many of you remember that we saw that? I made up my mind to use her. Huh? The interviewer said, to use her for what? He said, to kill her. Young boy. And he said, before he came, I pulled, is it codeine now? Inside Sprite. I loaded it. And I gave to her to drink. If that, lady, if that girl was born again, if she was like one of my daughters that gave testimony here, number one, she wouldn't even go. Be careful when you meet strangers. As Paul said this morning, the social media is addictive. The social media was designed to take life off you. How many, many people had died, life wasted by contact on social media? Be careful. Somebody you have not met before. 
And I have told you here again and again, when a proposer looks too robust, too good, too good, when we do it like this, do it like this, million will just come. You know, it's the end of the day. The four one nights and the frosters, they feed on people's greed. And an average Nigerian I know is greedy. Even among those of you that are looking at me with big eyes. <laughs> greedy. When they hear money. When they hear money. Ah. Emilio, when they hear money, they throw caution to the wind. There is nothing for one nice. Yahoo, Yahoo, and all the evil people. There is nothing they have not tried on me. You know, by the grace of God, I have a, I have a name. Some of you don't even have the kind of name they are looking for. You wonder, you wonder, how did they get your number? How did they, then you remember, oh, I'm in the public place. If you Google now and say, Femi Emmanuel, everything about me will come. Then they bring proposals. One said to me one day, sir, we know you are a man of integrity. We've been following you. We respect you. And uh, we want to put money into your account. We want to put money into your account. Serious money. If you give us one, like I want to put money into your account. As soon as you say things like that, something will be blinking in my spirit. Danger, 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 danger. There is nothing they have not done to forewarn me. But it's not possible. You know why? I am not desperate and I am not greedy. And I know that when the proposal looks too beautiful, there is a lie behind it. Because I know nothing comes easy. I know there is a process that leads to everything. So when it appears abracadabra, you don't have to be involved. It doesn't cost you anything. Million will just come. Uh, pull better's mentality. I said, Jadanu, Buruku. Some people will be at Okado there. They are calling you, and the number of UK will be appearing. How they do those things, I don't know. <laughs> How they do those things, I don't know. Uh, yes, I know you. Yes, you know me. Don't you know me? I you are my What if I for wolf I think I've told you. I told you. And they have agents. We are agents of God. They are an agent of the devil. If you don't operate in the spiritual, they will draw a wool over your face. Everybody get spiritual. Please build up your spiritual life. Build up your spiritual life. Get close to God. Learn how to hear the Holy Spirit. Learn how to hear from the Bible. Learn how to see Rema from Logos. If you, didn't, if you haven't gotten to that level, you have not started at all. He said, my sheep hear my voice. A stranger they will not follow. There are many so-called Christians following strange spirits. Strangers. Money, money, money. You don't, those who run after money never get money. Those who run after God. And they do the things of God. And they follow the procedure. We are bringing a man in the coming world lifting conference, Olumide Emmanuel. I don't know how many of you have heard that man. He's a guru. When he talks about how to grow money from zero to become easy. Everybody has his own area of anointing. He's dangerously anointed in that area. Don't miss any of the sessions of World Lifting Conference. Faith comes by hearing. Many of you have been doing businesses, you've been struggling there. He will tell you how to take it further. Don't hear money. My daughters, ladies, young daughters in the house, if you are greedy for money, if you are too desperate, small, small boys will be taking you to bed, vitalizing you. They will be tossing you like this. Because you are looking for money. I will take you to London. London, boo. London that you will be going and coming on your own. Are you hearing me? 
I will buy a handset for you. Those are ordinary handsets. <laughs> I will take you to Italy. Ordinary Italy. We made them eat them up. Yeah, yeah, not true. Yeah, yeah, not true. I am not desperate for anything. I'm not looking for. Look, overnight success is a myth. It don't, it's a lie. There is no overnight success. There is a route to where you are going. When you know Jesus, he aids you. He gives you speed. He sends destiny helpers. But you still have a procedure. Everybody get to grow spiritually. Many people have been babes for too long. I am born again. That is the end. Born againism is the starting point. Then you start growing in the spirit. We must have that grace to grow spiritually. If you, stay, if you sit before me and I discuss with you for 10 minutes, I can write a book about you. And so I, am, I was in engineering. And I started as an engineer, getting contracts. And a contractor is always desperate for more. And I said to all contractors in the house, all those who live by contract, Government must give you contract. Institution must give you contract. Don't do it for Come out of this secretive. And those who take you to do things secretly, we exploit you. Look, this is our relationship. I don't want anybody to know. In fact, our first of all moving with Beatrice. The day we told people that, my, that relationship run into trouble. Then I took on Bosse. As soon as and the parents knew problem came in. Then Esther came. So I have learned that when people know about it, it something will happen. This one is between me and you. Ah! Oh, sorry! You have a do it. You better run. Somebody say you want to go ready to meet your parents? He's not ready to meet your pastor. He's not ready to know your siblings. What are you still waiting for? A killer is before you. In fact, apart from sexually molesting you, he may use you to make money. When nobody knows who you are relating with. Please, all daughters in the house, all businessmen and businesswomen, get connected to God. Not just coming to church. Not just being religious. Get to hear God. Your ears shall hear a voice behind you. This is the way. Walk ye in it. Many of you, the voices of your problems don't make you hear God anymore. Please. Build up your spiritual life. The first area of Dominion is spiritual area. I won't be able to go beyond this. Rise up. I will continue with you next time. I will give you the others next time. Go and work on this. Lord, I if, if you are hearing God now, tell God I want to hear you better. I want to hear you more clearly. Don't take a step further until you hear from God through his word, through the Holy Spirit. And through the mouth of your pastor. How many areas? The word. The spirit of God within you. You will hear a voice within you. The spirit of God will speak to your spirit. And despite the two. Still find out from a mentor. Your mentor could be your pastor. Your mentor may not be your pastor. But somebody whose integrity. Whose character whose name, whose pedigree, you know and respect. Why was I talking this the other time? Don't get closer to a person that has nobody he respects. Everybody must have somebody to submit to. I am your geo, isn't it? I'm your, I'm your pastor, isn't it? There are one or two persons that when they talk to me, I don't just throw it away. I wouldn't say I hear God. I have seen them as mentors, as fathers ahead of me, corroborate. And of course, if they are spiritual as I am spiritual, our word will not be different. Because it's the same Holy Spirit. 
Don't be secretive. Come out of it. Many people have lost their lives that way. Many people have lost their mission that way. Lost their marriages that way. Lost their businesses that way. Because they are just trying to do it all alone. God never made life to be so. Lift up your hand and say, Oh Lord, let my spiritual antenna be active. I want to hear you more. Holy Spirit, come into my spirit. I want to hear you more. Open your mouth and call for the grace to hear him more. Many dangers will be averted if only we can hear him. Many pitfalls will be averted if only you can hear God. Many losses will be averted. Untimely death will be averted if only you can hear God. Lord, I want to hear you more. Holy Ghost, I want your voice to be clearer to me. Lead me by every step of the way. Small matter, big matter, in all my decisions, let me hear you more clearly. Open my spiritual eyes, open my spiritual ears to hear you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to pray for all of us. The voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the scripture. And the voice of the man or the woman that God has made a mentor or a shepherd to you. Don't forget that I said that. But you see, we started talking about realms of dominion. And we are only able to go to the spiritual realm today. Next time I'll go into the physical realm, dominion in the physical realm, dominion in the marital space, dominion financially, dominion intellectually. We will cover all that. Don't be in a hurry. But work on this one you have had. But the, for, the starting point is to say, Jesus, come into my heart. You remember, I showed you the capital S for the spirit and the small S for the spirit of man. And I said, until the spirit of God Ignite the spirit man in man. Man does not become alive. Every man is a dead walking corpse. As far as God is concerned. Until the Holy Spirit interjects with your spirit. And it's so easy. It takes a willingness to do. Which is what God gave me grace to do some years back. Ability to hear the, a message like this and say, I want, that, I want that dimension. I want that dimension. It will Bring a new version of you. I want that dimension. I want the spirit of God to ignite my spirit. I want to be born again. I want to know Jesus. He said, behold, I stand at the door and know. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. If you hear my voice, if you open the door, I will come in. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man, if any woman will hear my voice, the voice of God you will hear is through a vessel that is talking to you now. If you open your heart and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to have that experience you just described now. I want to have that experience. I want the Spirit of God to ignite my spirit so that I will be alive to hear God, to receive direction from him. All heads bow, all eyes closed. Pray for me, sir. I want my sins forgiven. I want the Spirit of God to come into my spirit and wake me up spiritually. I want my name to be removed from the book of death to the book of life from today. Pray for me, sir. God has anointed me to pray for such people. If you are humble, only humble people can make that decision. Arrogant people, cocky people, argumentative people cannot do it. Self-justified people cannot do that. But if you are humble, you know, ah, I need God. Ah, this is not how I should be. This is not how I should be. I want my spirit to come alive. I want to be hearing God in my spirit. I want the blood of Jesus to wash me. Pastor Femi Manuel, is that what you did? I want to do it also. Everyone that wants to do it today, without arrogance, without stubbornness, without shame, without shyness, I want to say, I want to pray for such people. All eyes are closed, all heads are bowed. You and God alone, in humility, just raise up your right hand above your head. If I see that right hand, I know you are ready for God to touch you. You are ready for God to be born in you. 
you are ready for your sins to be forgiven. You are ready for the spirit of God to come into your spirit. Raise up your right hand above your head. God bless you if you are doing that. Pastor, pray for me. I want Jesus in my life. Ushers, help me identify those raising their hand. Please leave where you are and come here. Just leave where you are and come and stand before me here. Just come. That was how I came. And I was prayed for. And my life changed. No shyness. No shyness is between you and God. And don't postpone it till next time. Let it be today. Let it be today. This is a great opportunity to hear this and to decide. It takes a willingness. It takes a decision. Young or old, male or female, rich or poor, illiterate or educated. All of us, we are the same before him. I want God in my heart. I want my spirit to get connected to God's spirit. I want to be alive spiritually. I want Holy Ghost to come into my spirit. Keep coming. All of you watching me online and you want to take that same decision, take the same step. Where you are, the prayer, I will pray for them here. Let me pray for you there. Please come. Keep coming. Please come. Keep up. Two people are still there. Two people. Two people. You are struggling. You are doubting. Should I go? Should I not? Ah, put the devil to shame. The voice that is saying go is the voice of God. The voice that is saying don't go is the voice of the devil. Where are you? Where are you? God bless you. Remaining one. Remaining one. Quickly, 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 quickly. Remaining one. Where are you? Make it today and put the devil to shame. Every one of you here, put your right hand on your chest. Bow your head and begin to say, Lord, I give my life to you. Yes, that's the second one. Come and stand here. I give my life to you. I'm sorry for the life I have lived. Congregation, stretch your hand towards them. Pray for them in the spirit. Pray for them in your understanding. This is the greatest miracle that can happen to anybody. All our senior citizens, if you are not able to stand that much, please sit down. Others that has the strength to stand up, don't sit down. Rise up, stretch your hand towards them, prophesy on their lives that today will be their day. Today will be the day of reconciliation. Those of you in front of me, your hand on your chest. Those of you watching me online, your hand on your chest and begin to say, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. I have come to you today. I want the spirit of God in my spirit to wake up my spirit. I want to be conscious of God. I want to be hearing from you. I want to be led by you. Holy Ghost, come into my spirit. Jesus Christ, rescue my soul. Blood of Jesus, wash me clean. Pray, that's your prayer. The whole congregation is praying for you. This is the greatest decision anybody can make for Jesus to come into your heart, for your sins to be forgiven, for the blood of Jesus to wash you clean. Congregation, are you still praying for them? Pray with passion for them. Pray with passion for them. The Holy Ghost is, is changing lives here. Those of you here say, I am sorry. Lord, I am sorry. I want you to have a deep sense of remorse. I'm sorry for the warm out of this secretive. And those who take you to do things secretly, we exploit you. Look, this is our relationship. I don't want anybody to know. In fact, our first of all moving will be actress. The day we told people that, my, that relationship run into trouble. Then I took on Bosse. As soon as the parents knew, problem came in. Then Esther came. So I have learned that when people know about it, it something will happen. This one is between me and you. Ah! Oh, sorry! <laughs> You're very doing you better run. Somebody say you want to He's not ready to meet your parents? He's not ready to meet your pastor? He's not ready to know your siblings? What are you still waiting for? A killer is before you. In fact, apart from sexually molesting you, he may use you to make money. When nobody knows who you are relating with. Please, all daughters in the house, all businessmen and businesswomen get connected to God. Not just coming to church. Not just being religious. Get to hear God. Your ears shall hear a voice behind you. This is the way. Walk ye in it. 
Many of you, the voices of your problems don't make you hear God anymore. Please. Build up your spiritual life. The first area of dominion is spiritual area. I won't be able to go beyond this. Rise up. I will continue with you next time. I will give you the others next time. Go and work on this. Lord, I if, if you are hearing God now, tell God I want to hear you better. I want to hear you more clearly. Don't take a step further until you hear from God through his word, through the Holy Spirit, and through the mouth of your pastor. How many areas? The word. The spirit of God within you. You will hear a voice within you. The spirit of God will speak to your spirit. And despite the two, still find out from a mentor. Your mentor could be your pastor. Your mentor may not be your pastor, but somebody whose integrity, whose character, whose name, whose pedigree, you know and respect. Why was I talking this the other time? Don't get closer to a person that has nobody he respects. Everybody must have somebody to submit to. I am your geo, isn't it? I'm your, I'm your pastor, isn't it? There are one or two persons that when they talk to me, I don't just throw it away. I wouldn't say I hear God. I have seen them as mentors, as fathers ahead of me, collaborate. And of course, if they are spiritual as I am spiritual, our word will not be different. Because it's the same Holy Spirit. Don't be secretive. Come out of it. Many people have lost their lives that way. Many people have lost their mission that way. Lost their marriages that way. Lost their businesses that way. Because they are just trying to do it all alone. God never made life to be so. Lift up your hand and say, Oh Lord, let my spiritual antenna be active. I want to hear you more. Holy Spirit, come into my spirit. I want to hear you more. Open your mouth and call for the grace to hear him more. Many dangers will be averted if only we can hear him. Many pitfalls will be averted if only you can hear God. Many losses will be averted. Untimely death will be averted if only you can hear God. Lord, I want to hear you more. Holy Ghost, I want your voice to be clearer to me. Lead me by every step of the way. Small matter, big matter, in all my decisions, let me hear you more clearly. Open my spiritual eyes, open my spiritual ears to hear you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to pray for all of us. The voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the scripture, and the voice of the man or the woman that God has made a mentor or a shepherd to you. Don't forget that I said that. But you see, we started talking about realms of dominion. And we are only able to go to the spiritual realm today. Next time, I'll go into the physical realm, dominion in the physical realm, dominion in the marital space, dominion financially, dominion intellectually. We will cover all that. Don't be in a hurry. But work on this one you have had. But the, for, the starting point is to say, Jesus, come into my heart. You remember, I show you the capital S for the spirit and the small S for the spirit of man. And I said, until the spirit of God Ignite the spirit man in man. Man does not become alive. Every man is a dead walking corpse as far as God is concerned. Until the Holy Spirit interjects with your spirit. And it's so easy. It takes a willingness to do. Which is what God gave me grace to do some years back. Ability to hear the, a message like this and say, I want, that, I want that dimension. I want that dimension. It will Bring a new version of you. I want that dimension. I want the spirit of God to ignite my spirit. I want to be born again. I want to know Jesus. He said, behold, I stand at the door and know. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. 
If you hear my voice, if you open the door, I will come in. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man, if any woman will hear my voice, the voice of God you will hear is through a vessel that is talking to you now. If you open your heart and say, Pastor, pray for me, I want to have that experience you just described now. I want to have that experience. I want the Spirit of God to ignite my spirit so that I will be alive to hear God, to receive direction from Him. All heads bow, all eyes closed. Pray for me, sir. I want my sins forgiven. I want the Spirit of God to come into my spirit and wake me up spiritually. I want my name to be removed from the book of death to the book of life from today. Pray for me, sir. God has anointed me to pray for such people. If you are humble, only humble people can make that decision. Arrogant people, cocky people, argumentative people cannot do it. Self-justified people cannot do that. But if you are humble, you know, ah, I need God. Ah, this is not how I should be. This is not how I should be. I want my spirit to come alive. I want to be hearing God in my spirit. I want the blood of Jesus to wash me. Pastor Femi Manuel, is that what you did? I want to do it also. Everyone that wants to do it today, without arrogance, without stubbornness, without shame, without shyness, I want to say, I want to pray for such people. All eyes are closed, all heads are bowed. You and God alone, in humility, just raise up your right hand above your head. If I see that right hand, I know you are ready for God to touch you. You are ready for God to be born in you. You are ready for your sins to be forgiven. You are ready for the spirit of God to come into your spirit. Raise up your right hand above your head. God bless you if you are doing that. Pastor, pray for me. I want Jesus in my life. Ushers, help me identify those raising their hand. Please leave where you are and come here. Just leave where you are and come and stand before me here. Just come. That was how I came. And I was prayed for. And my life changed. No shyness. No shyness is between you and God. And don't postpone it till next time. Let it be today. Let it be today. This is a great opportunity to hear this. And to decide. It takes a willingness. It takes a decision. Young or old. Male or female. Rich or poor. Illiterate or educated. All of us, we are the same before him. I want God in my heart. I want my spirit to get connected to God's spirit. I want to be alive spiritually. I want Holy Ghost to come into my spirit. Keep coming. All of you watching me online and you want to take that same decision, take the same step. Where you are, the prayer, I will pray for them here. Let me pray for you there. Please come. Keep coming. Please come. Keep up. Two people are still there. Two people, two people. You are struggling. You are doubting. Should I go? Should I not? Ah, put the devil to shame. The voice that is saying go is the voice of God. The voice that is saying don't go is the voice of the devil. Where are you? Where are you? God bless you. Remaining one. Remaining one. Quickly, 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 quickly. Remaining one. Where are you? Make it today and put the devil to shame. Every one of you here, put your right hand on your chest. Bow your head and begin to say, Lord, I give my life to you. Yes, that's the second one. Come and stand here. I give my life to you. I'm sorry for the life I have lived. Congregation, stretch your hand towards them. Pray for them in the spirit. Pray for them in your understanding. This is the greatest miracle that can happen to anybody. All our senior citizens, if you are not able to stand that much, please sit down. Others that has the strength to stand up, don't sit down. Rise up, stretch your hand towards them, prophesy on their lives that today will be their day, today will be the day of reconciliation. Those of you in front of me, your hand on your chest, those of you watching me online, your hand on your chest and begin to say, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. I have come to you today. I want the spirit of God in my spirit to wake up my spirit. I want to be conscious of God. I want to be hearing from you. I want to be led by you. Holy Ghost, come into my spirit. Jesus Christ, rescue my soul. Blood of Jesus, wash me clean. Pray, that's your prayer. The whole congregation is praying for you. This is the greatest decision anybody can make for Jesus to come into your heart, for your sins to be forgiven, for the blood of Jesus to wash you clean. Congregation, are you still praying for them? Pray with passion for them. 
pray with passion for them the holy ghost is is changing lives here those of you here say i am sorry lord i am sorry i want you to have a deep sense of remorse i'm sorry for the way i have lived my life today i submit to jesus today i ask jesus to be my lord and savior jesus i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for me i surrender my heart to you i surrender my life to you wash me in your precious blood holy spirit come into my spirit that's your prayer I'll be praying it a change will come over your life a renewal a rebirth a regeneration a new you thank you father in jesus name we pray why the congregation is still praying reverently those of you here lay your hand on your chest as you have done all of you online doing the same prayer say this words of prayer after me it's your prayer i'm only leading you in it and be sincere have a deep sense of i am sorry say my dear heavenly father that is too low say it well my dear heavenly father i come before you today to accept you as my lord and savior i am a sinner have mercy on me i have sinned against you in many ways have mercy on me from today i open up my heart i open my life be my savior come into my heart I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. From today, I am yours. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I now receive you. I will follow you, grow in you the rest of my life. My spirit, come alive. Connect to the Spirit of God for daily guidance. Thank you for saving me. I am born again now. My sins are forgiven me now. I'm a new creature now. I am a child of God from now. In Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for you. You'll be saying amen. The whole congregation will also be saying amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your word says, whosoever will come, you will know why cast out. They have come. Holy Ghost, baptize them into the body of Christ. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. The blood of Jesus has cleansed you. Amen. Receive the spirit of sonship. Amen. Begin to grow in grace. The power and the grace that sustain us will sustain you. Amen. You will grow. He said we will bear fruit and our fruit will not withstand. You will stand. Amen. The Lord bless you and lift you high. In Jesus name. Take your hands off your chairs. Open your eyes and look at me. Congregation sit down. You are blessed. I congratulate you. It's not bigger than this. It's not more than this. That you voluntarily came and said, Jesus, I give you my heart. Something has happened. Whether you felt anything in your body or not is a spiritual thing. But one thing more. One thing more. Having made this decision, you must not go back. He said, there is no one having laid his hand on the plug that looked bad that will be fit. What does it mean you should not go back? When I came out like this, and I was prayed for like this, I was invited to be baptized in water. I followed them. I was baptized. So somebody said, I've been baptized before. Do it again. There's no sin about it. And we don't delay our own. Our baptistry is at the back of this building here. We constructed a pool there. We we baptize you like Jesus was baptized. No, Jesus was baptized. John the Baptist said, no, don't baptize me. You are the Lord. He said, suffered it to be so. He said, as many as received him and are baptized shall be saved. Somebody asked me one day, pastor, what if, if somebody did not baptize, get baptized and he dies or Jesus comes, will he make heaven? I said, don't wait till then to find out. He said, as many as receive him and are baptized. That's your first obedience. Christianity is a life of obedience. We want to baptize you in water next Sunday. Next Sunday is a special service. It's a firstborn and first son service. It's going to be one combined service. So when you are coming next Sunday, take another clothes. Because when we dip into that pool and pull you out, remember when Jesus was pulled out, heavens opened. And the Spirit of God, like a dove, 
came and spoke to him. When we pull you out of water, something happened. Some of you will not feel the sickness you have again forever. Some of you, the power and the presence of God rest on you from that day. The Spirit of God, like a dove, came from heaven and heavens opened. And there was a voice. This is my beloved son. I was talking about hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. You will hear it more. Please obey. Bring another cloth. Then we'll take you to the dressing room. You change. And then we will give you eight days teaching. In fact, every Sunday, one hour, one of the services. Then there's eight days school. Only eight days. If you don't have time in the morning, we give you five weekends. To deepen you. To strengthen you. And I want you to allow me to be your prayer partner. Allow me to be your pastor. If I am old enough to be your pastor, will you allow me to be your pastor? And there are other pastors that are seated with me that will talk to you. This church operates cell system. So there will be a zonal pastor, a cell pastor. We have so many people that will be relating with you and helping you to grow. Within the next one year or two, you are at a different level. I ask that God will give you the grace of obedience. He will talk to you briefly. You will come back. Then we can take the communion together. Now that you have done this, you are well qualified for the communion. I love you. I bless God for you. Please, follow him. Look at him. All of you follow him. You will come back. We are going to wait for you to come back. Church, is that all you can do? That this whole of people gave their life to Christ? Everyone but tie I want to say, tear, 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 tear. Is that all you can do? You are not celebrating the fact that people are getting born again? Amen. Let's give our tithe. Media put the payment information for all our online viewers and members. By now, every one of you should have saved that number. And... Do your tithing and your seed sowing. Father, I've been prophesying on your children, giving them illustration and example. If you did it for others, you will do it for us. After knowing you and living right, you will add money to us. You will add resources so that we can preach the gospel. Every Matthew Ashmalo told me he had done this kind of meeting in Ikorodu. He said it cost him 800 million naira to do. Then, so it's going to be costing billion now, and we do it. You will have money. You and I will feed the poor. You and I will clothe the naked. You and I will build, we, we house the homeless. We are not talking about money to use for our nonsense, but for the kingdom. Everybody, whether you are standing or not, stretch your hand here. I prophesy to hands, you will hold money. The work you are doing will grow. Amen. Your investment will grow. Amen. Your assets will grow. Amen. Those who don't have anything doing now, God will give you ideas. Amen. Helpers will come. Amen. Your customers will multiply. Amen. Your clients will multiply. Amen. And you will still be anointed. Amen. You will still be holy. Amen. You will still be righteous. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please give your tithe. Somebody is coming to take the offering.